it could be a wiggle in time. Uh, what we have here is we're looking at cycles, and cycles usually refer to a, a time period. Vibrations usually refer to the wiggle part. Um, and the cycles are when you have a specific type of motion that repeats itself over and over and over again. So George, we see, we see here, as you're saying, a wiggle, is I could take this, I know it's shaking a little bit, but we could call this equilibrium. And if I pull this down, we get a wiggle, something that wiggles. But if we take a stopwatch, right, and we time it, we'll see that in a time period, does it look pretty constant then? Yes. Yeah. All right. It cycles the same position at the same time period over and over and over and over and over again. It continues to repeat itself. This is called simple harmonic motion. This is motion that repeats itself over and over and over and over again. This is a, um, a spring with a mass on the end of it. But we remember we did a lab with pendulums? Uh, from potential energy to kinetic energy, and we timed it, how much time it took to go back and forth, and then we adjusted the length of the string. Yeah. Now what you should have learned from that is by timing it, these two bobs are the same mass, right? Here on Earth they have the same weight. And they're hanging on strings with two different lengths. If I bring the two bobs with the same masses, to approximately the same distance or angle and let them go, what do you notice about the shorter one? It goes faster. It goes faster. And this relationship, if you guys want to write this down, is that the time it takes, the time period it takes, the time period it takes to complete its cycle away and back again equals 2 pi the length divided by gravity, the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so we have here, we have here uh, the square root of length of the string of the bob divided by the acceleration of gravity. And the acceleration of gravity is what numeric value? Time. About time. Yeah, 9.81 is what we uh, is closer to what we want to use, but our book uses the number 10 because it's such an easy number to do multiplication with. So 9 meters per second squared is the acceleration due to gravity. And the time, capital T, the time period, a period is how long a complete cycle it takes a complete cycle. Because remember, if I, if I give this a little spin, see how it starts to look like a circle? Remember the planets going around, how long it takes to go around the sun is what? The time period, right? We have a revolution, we have a period. All right, so this is important for you to know is that the time it takes a mass to go back and forth isn't in relation to its mass, but it's in relation to the length of the string. So if I take this one's half the mass of this one, right? This bob is half the mass of this one. And if I have them at approximately the same string length, and I pull them back at approximately the same distance, you see how they move at approximately the same? See that? Yeah. I got it. It's tough to get them to drop them at the same time. But if you let them go at the same time, they'll have the same back and forth motion. All right? So it's not the mass that determines how long it takes to complete a cycle. It's the length of the string on a pendulum. All right, this also is simple harmonic motion. Now look what's happening here. And look what's happening here. This motion, how would you describe this motion, George? Back and forth. How would you describe this motion? Up and down. If I had a piece of paper sitting here, if I had a piece of paper sitting here on the table, and this marker was, uh, what would it look like? Possibly, you've seen something like this before. Is 
what we have happening in either one of these relationships is you have um, this periodic motion. It goes back and forth, back and forth. But if I take this piece of paper, and this is going back and forth this way, if I pull the paper this way, or if I take this piece of paper and I pull it across this way, does anyone want to do that? All right, good. All right, so you're going to hold this up like this, right? And you're going to hold this piece of paper like this. Wait, wait, stop. Move back a little bit. You keep your, keep, yeah, okay, stop. Now what you're going to do is you're not going to do it right now, but you're going to hold this tight, you're going to try and keep it even, and you're just going to walk backwards, right? What do you mean? You're just going to walk backwards. Okay. And you're just going to stand here, and you're not going to move. All right? So here I have this uh, pendulum bob moving this way back and forth. All right, move. All right, that's good. Now, she said I wasn't writing anything. All right, did you see what I did there? I simply uh, took the. All right, you can sit down. I took the marker and made way souvenir. Moved it back and forth, and what pattern did I get? A wave. See that? I got a wave. And I could do the same thing with this. I could have them hold this, and I could have the marker go right along the side, up and down this, with the same uh, frequency. And then if you move this this way, if you want to All right, go ahead. Faster. All right, stop. You see that? Yeah. Well, she changed speed. She was going too slow. She went nice and fast. All right. You can put that down on the table. Not in front of all my stuff. All right, you guys see that? What is this shape called? A wave. All right, Rizal, if you could just hold this up like this. Stay right here. Just stay right here. Don't move. All right, so take a look what we have here in this motion. Here's a wave. Now this is, see where it is right here? It's an equilibrium, right? The tension equals the weight. It's an equilibrium. And this is, where would it be? Would be the highest point, the lowest point, or the middle? Middle. The middle. All right, so the equilibrium is this middle point. And what I do is I pull it down below. Now what will happen? Will it go above this bar, under the bar, or just to the bar? Above. Above. You got everyone can see this okay? Yeah. Above, right? So it goes zoop, 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 zoop. So what we have happening here, you just you can just stay right there because I want is uh, getting tired. We have this taking place up and down, and then all of a sudden it starts moving. <laughs> Alright? So we get this, here's a wave. We have equilibrium taking place right in the middle. Uh, it starts, let's say, this is one wavelength. It's an S. This is called a transverse wave. This type of wave is called a transverse wave. And we'll study all the parts. It's always easy to see all these parts on a transverse wave. From our equilibrium, remember I pulled it down and then let it go. Its highest point, what is the highest point called? The crest. The highest point, very good though. The distance from equilibrium to the highest point or the crest is called what? Amplitude. Amplitude. All right, and then we have the lowest, so keep it up there. We have the lowest point, what's that called? Uh, it depends if you're from Kansas or Kentucky. If it's a troll or a trough, right? Pigs eat at the what? The what? The troll or the trough. Kansas or Kentucky? Who's from Kansas? Nobody. Who's from Kentucky? All right, so let's just call it the lowest point. This is the lowest point of the wave. All right? The lowest point. The highest point is across. The lowest point is the trough. Uh, pigs eat at the trough.